Hashtag Ask Goji Man, how important are gut bacteria for your health? Great question, let's get to it. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's good to see you all again. If you haven't met before, then hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. And later this year, I'm going to be doing a PhD in nutritional science. I make vegan health and nutrition videos as often as I can, so if you have a question for me, then hashtag AskGojiMan in the comments below, or alternatively send your video questions through to contacts at gojimannutrition.com. As always, just a quick reminder that I'm providing consults, organic acid stool tests, and SIBO tests via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests, as they will provide a lot of very detailed information, upon which you can start making informed decisions and start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So as we are all becoming more and more aware, your microbiome has such a huge and pivotal role for your immune system. So for example, approximately three quarters of your immune system is located in and around your gut. So you have things like the gastric associated lymphoid tissue that resides in your stomach. And you also have the gastric mucosa associated lymph tissue and these produce antibodies. And these antibodies will ward off bacteria, viruses and parasites, etc. So quite simply, if your gut flora is out of balance through antibiotic use, etc., then this is likely to have a direct impact on your overall immunity. So just to quickly sum up gut bacteria, when you do a stool test, these are the three headings that you will see at the top of your test results. So the beneficial bacteria, the commensal bacteria, and also the pathogenic bacteria. So the beneficial bacteria are obviously the bacteria you want to see in abundance, and people obviously associate beneficial bacteria with fermented foods and probiotics. So here we are really talking about species such as bacillus, lactobacillus, and bifidobacterium, etc. Now your beneficial bacteria are responsible for providing nutrition for your body, such as vitamin K2 and certain B vitamins. They are also responsible for helping detoxifying your body by aiding your detoxification pathways. So for example, if you don't have sufficient beneficial bacteria, then the guts will have more beta-glucuronidase than you want, and this really affects bile conjugation and hormones, etc. So if bile comes into the gut and conjugates to a hormone to remove it from your body, having high amounts of beta-glucuronidase in the gut can then start uncleaving the bile and hormones, and then these old discarded hormones can then start being reabsorbed by the body, which can then cause all sorts of issues. So you can think about this process simply, if you have lots of beneficial bacteria in the gut, it will control and bring down your beta-glucuronidase levels, and when you have low levels of gut bacteria, your beta-glucuronidase levels can increase exponentially and cause lots of issues in your body. One final area of beneficial bacteria that is so important for your gut and overall health are the acids and chemicals that these bacteria produce. So this is things like lactic acid and CO2, and lactic acid and CO2 are so important because when you have these in the gut, it lowers the gut pH levels, which then makes the gut inhospitable for pathogenic bacteria and yeast. Moving across the top of your stool test results and you come to your commensal bacteria types. And these are bacteria types such as alpha and gamma hemolytics and also Klebsiella. Now it is perfectly normal and healthy to have commensal bacteria in the gut, but if they become overpopulated then they have the potential to become pathogenic in nature. And later in this video I will discuss the stressors and factors that push commensal bacteria into becoming pathogenic bacteria in the gut and what you can then do to avoid these stressors. Moving across your stool test results, you then have the dysbiotic and pathogenic stool types. So these could be bacterial infections such as Citrobacter and Klebsiella, H. pylori, parasites, C. diff and other gut infections that you really don't want in your body. And some of the main problems with these type of bacterial infections is that they produce toxins in the gut such as mycotoxins and endotoxins. They create malabsorption and they also drive intestinal permeability or leaky gut. Some of the other problems associated with these type of bacterial and gut infections is that they will also disrupt peristalsis. Now peristalsis is the muscle contractions that push your food and stool through your digestive tract. So when you have bacterial infections, your gut motility can be slowed 
and when this happens you can then start reabsorbing some of the toxins in your gut. Bacterial and gut infections will also cause malabsorption in your gut so then you're not going to be able to effectively absorb certain nutrients and minerals which can then obviously impact your body carrying out essential metabolic processes such as energy systems, Krebs cycles, electron transport chains etc etc. And one of the final things that pathogenic bacteria will do in the gut is to drive leaky gut and autoimmune conditions. So when you have pathogenic bacteria, they will drive into your intestinal wall lining, pull apart the junctions and then allow undigested food and toxins into your body, which can then start driving autoimmune conditions. So now we better understand the importance of beneficial bacteria in your gut, let's now discuss the stresses in the body that will cause your gut bacteria to become unbalanced and then cause the proliferation of bad bacteria. Now one of the biggest disruptors in the body is medications and medications such as antibiotics, proton pump inhibitors, ibuprofen and steroids will absolutely decimate your gut flora. Another massive problem is refined processed sugars in the diet that will feed the pathogenic bacteria and cause them to proliferate so you need to be very careful to avoid overdoing those treats. Stress in your life will also directly impact the beneficial flora in your gut so if you have family work or money problems or stresses then this stress will increase interleukin-6 or IL-6 as it's known which is an immune compound that interacts with the gut bacteria and can cause all sorts of issues if present in high amounts. Obviously one of the biggest stresses in the gut is not getting sufficient pre and probiotics. So if you aren't eating resistant starches, enough fibre or fermented foods to feed and proliferate the good guys, then you are also going to run into problems. There are also all sorts of chemicals and compounds that will directly cause stress on your microbiome, which will then have a direct effect on pH levels, stomach acidity, enzyme and bile production and so on. So it's pivotal on a daily basis that your gut gets all the raw materials that it needs to keep you healthy. So the pre and probiotics, the fiber, the resistant starches, and this is even more important if you've taken a lot of antibiotics in your past. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, keep the questions coming. Hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.